triumphant fanfare, and we discover a new world, the Awakening Wood. Not to be confused, confused with the Forest of Hope. We get more stuff in the Picklepedia as well. Red Bull Borb, Snow Bull Borb, the Violet Candy Pop Bud, and Clovers. I'm so glad we have Clovers now. I do want to take a look at it. It's a Citrus Lump. This fruit was dug up from the floor on an icy cavern. It appears that the fruit's thick skin protected it from frigid cold. It's quite remarkable. The shape of the fruit eerily resembles the president's head. P.S. The labyrinthian underground entrails of this planet look like a completely different world. Utter scrap. The area was recently touched down and it's is, in, is blanketed with a fresh layer of frozen precipitation. As tranquil and relaxing as it is, I named it the Valley of Repose. Using Pikmin to move obstacles, I was able to open up some new areas for exploration where I found this hunk of metal. All right, I want to see what the 7-Up Cap says. I often brag about my inexhaustible supply of self-control, but when I peer at this treasure, I can't help but want to take a drink. Eh, Sprite's better. The Purple Pikmin was somehow, were somehow able to carry this massive treasure. Today, we measured their physical strength using the ship's onboard beef, beefometer. It seems that they have ten times the weight and physical power of any other Pikmin. When I throw them, they land with a resounding thud. I decided to commemorate the cave I first encountered them in by naming it the Emergence Cave. Cool. All right. <laughs> Nothing left we can do in the Valley of Repose. Everything else is closed off by water. So let's go off to Awakening Wood. Which is actually the real easiest world of the game. Valley of Repose gets quite nasty if you explore more of it. Awakening Wood, on the other hand, is pretty gentle. Ah, the cherry blossoms are in bloom. It's currently spring. I love how, like, we're on Earth... But the, there are different parts of the Earth that are all four different seasons. Like, that's not how it works. You can't have summer, fall, winter, and spring at the same time on the same planet. Good morning. It should please you to know that pur the purple Pikmin are lodged safely in my hole. The confines of my interior seem to suit them perfectly, though they do occasionally tickle me. Stand in the ring of light below me and press A to call the purple Pikmin out. Cool. Definitely want to do that. Give me 20. Alright, come here, my beefy boys. We ride. Louie, you can stay behind. <laughs> Your favorite. There we go. Okay. I'm not going to take on that red... I think 20 purple should be enough for that guy, but I don't want to risk it just in case it's not. So... Let's get out our red Pikmin as well. And if we can, let's try to find some nectar. Because, good lord, I'm getting tired of how slow these guys are. Oh yeah, the purple Pikmin will quite literally carry us through this. But we won't be able to take them everywhere. Oh yes, grass. Grass, yes. Where there's grass, there's nectar. Louis, has Olimar instructed you on the peculiarities of these Pikmin creatures? The Pikmin form groups based on color when disbarred with X. Grabbing Pikmin with A will also move them for, to group by color. Now for the bonus lesson. After grabbing a Pikmin with A, you can press left or right on the D-pad to swap it to another color. This is the first time you have heard of this? Olimar, remember to properly train new employees. I didn't even know Louie was a new employee until I got back, and then you immediately made me leave. I haven't had time. I just wanted to go to Disney World. So it's random whether they find Nectar or not. And thus far, they're not finding any. Wow. That? Oh, okay, there's one. Alright. If we can do this right, we can get most of the Pikmin eating the nectar. Definitely want the purples. Whee! The Pikmin that drank the yellow nectar instantly matured into flower Pikmin. It appears to have enhanced motor skills. What a wondrous nectar. How intriguing. Like plants, Pikmin mature from leaf to bud to flower. Captain Olimar, you must share the information you have with your subordinate, Louis. Flower Pikmin are faster and more powerful. Okay, not everybody got a flower, but a lot of them did, which is great. Oh, yeah. 
You can see how fast the flower pigmen are, too. These are female shear grubs. They're easy. They can't even hurt you. So you can just smear them. Okay. I'm pretty sure my pit purples will just annihilate this guy. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I forgot how absurdly good purple pigmen are. Alright, red pikmin, grab that berry, bring it back. Oh, I, I love the music of this world. So good. I probably should move a little bit faster. I don't really need any more Pikmin at this point, so I shouldn't really be bothering carrying the carcasses back. Ooh, 170 Pokos for a Strawberry! The Sunseed Berry. That's actually a very, very apt description. Mmm, that looks like a nice berry. I mean, oh right! 10% of the debt recovered already. Sweet. I'll be honest, playing through Pikmin Free, it really made me crave the fruit that they were like... Like, like in that part of Pikmin Free where you get the watermelon from the boss... Oh man, like, I started, I, I craved watermelon so badly after that. It looked so good. Olimar, we have a problem. The onion has ceased ejecting seeds. Is it malfunctioning? Interesting. It now seems the number of life forms within the onion has increased. Didn't you note that no more than 100 Pikmin will venture onto the planet at once? But I currently observe only 95 on the surface. Could there be wild Pikmin somewhere? Why, yes, there could. Alright, I'm actually going to leave those Pikmin buried in the ground so they can mature into flower Pikmin. If you just leave them buried for long enough, they'll eventually turn into bud Pikmin and then flower Pikmin. Aha! Okay. Purple Pikmin, you're going to start work on this gate. Oh, actually, wait. We want to... Definitely want to hit that guy. Because we want as many guys to be Flower Pikmin as possible. I think that's pretty much all of them. Okay. Purple Pikmin, you can work on that. Red Pikmin, you're going to start farming these berries. Because good lord, are these berries good. Hey, you slacker, you don't get to hang around doing nothing. There we go. These black gates take a lot of, uh... A lot of Pikmin to break down, so... Let's leave them there. Oh, yes. The berries are so good. Definitely want these. Astounding, this red berry contains an ultra-spicy essence. It does not appear to have any monetary value, but I shall research potential uses for it. Bring me another specimen. Can do, will do, done. Louie, you can stay behind. Oh man, we still have a leaf pigment. Here we go. We got ten berries now. Captain Olimar, my research on the red berries you discovered has yielded a powerful potion. Behold the ultra spicy spray. Although it has been un untested, I believe it will have a spectacular result. Spray it on all of your Pikmin by pressing down on the D-pad. When you when necessary, I can produce one bottle of spray from ten berries. Press start or pause to contact me and confirm your berry count. Look at L on the radar screen. Oh yeah, we're gonna want those sprays. The ultra spicy spray, if we put it on our Pikmin, will cause them to basically move much faster, and will cause them to be uh, more powerful. All right, great job. Let's get some more Pikmin off so we can destroy these berries. Or not destroy the berries. Collect the berries. 
Just like that story Jamberry taught us. Because, hey, if I, if I can get a bunch of ultra spicy sprays out of this deal, yes, please, that would be for the best. All right, break break down this wall, Mr. Gorbachev. Oh, yep, as you can see, all of our red Pikmin now have buds. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, the second type of spray is even better than the first type. You better believe I'll be grinding for those as well. Yep, ten more berries and never spray. The problem is the second spray is a lot harder to come by. All right. Oh yeah, Louie, I guess you can come along as well. Actually, I like Louie's sound effects better. Okay. Camera, camera. This is the careening dirigi bug, I think. All we have to do is swarm them with a bunch of Pikmin, and boom, it won't be able to kill us. Actually, no, the careening dirigi bug, I think, is something else. I can't remember this fiend's name. Also over here, you can see that sunflowers. If you look closely, there are blinking eyes on it. I present to you. Well. I present to you, the Creeping Chrysanthemum. Once again, Purple Pigment can just wreck it. <laughs> How rude. Rude but true. And here we go, another cave. <laughs> Biological sensors are reacting violently. The readings are ominous. A beast of unknown power lurks in these depths. A large Pikmin group would be reassuring. My sound sensors are picking up hostile roars of many beasts. Expect dangerous encounters. Sensors are also showing extreme heat pockets. You may need flame-resistant Pikmin. But my records indicate no such data. Are my records incomplete? Despite all those ominous signs, this is one of the easiest caves in the game. The Hole of Beasts. You can see the flame up at top means that there are going to be fire hazards in this dungeon. So, it's recommended we bring red Pikmin. We don't have all 95 of our Pikmin, because a lot of them are buried in the ground, but we're waiting for them to turn to flowers, so we're gonna... 81 Pikmin is more than enough to deal with the stuff in here. Especially since 20 of them are purples. <laughs> Alright, off to the Hole of Beasts, sub-level 1. All right. So that's, again, female shear grubs. They can't do anything to us. No problem there. We might encounter male shear grubs as well, which are actually able to eat us, but they're still really easy to beat up. Yep, here's a male shear grub, because it's purple. So it'll actually try to bite us, but, again, we can swarm them and easily take them down. We can also throw a Pikmin directly on their head. So that's also very easy. There we go. There's a treasure over there, but I want to clear out all the enemies first. Yes, male shear grubs can eat you, but if you have a large group, it's very difficult for them to, because you can just... They, they have very little HP. You can swarm them, and then that's that. Hey, look, it's a D-pad! <laughs> There you go. You two can carry those back to base. Wow, if these are the beasts we're encountering... Oh, hi! Oh, it's just a female. The female shear grubs are white, and the male ones are purple. <laughs> that's an old D-pad. I think that's an, uh, an NES D-pad. The Stone of Glory. <laughs> oh, I love the names it comes up with. Oh, 
Meow. Yeah, we'll let you bring that back. That's fine. It's an extra, like, one or two Pocos. And then, yep, extra one Poco. <laughs> Alright. Off to some level two. So, so far, so good. This might be the area where I lose a Pikmin. <laughs> Just waiting for me to lose that Pikmin. Hole of Beasts, sub-level 2. It's like the same floor, but this time with an eerie pink hue. Yes, I love how it you save at the end of every floor. That's very nice. Oh, hey, it's Nectar. Well, most of our Pikmins are juiced up, but there are a couple of reds back here. Okay, I believe everyone's a flower Pikmin now, which is great. Okay, another dead end. I like breaking open the eggs with purple Pikmin, because sometimes the eggs can contain these spider enemies, where... They'll make your Pikmin freak out, but if you can kill them, then they can drop sprays. And that's, that's very nice to kill them, and purple Pikmin are great at killing them, because they have that home-in feature. Alright, so that's where the hole to the next sub-level sub is. Are there no treasures on this floor? All right, all right, little buddy, you can follow me. You can tell when you've collected the last treasure on the floor, but you, right now we can't tell if there are any treasures on the I don't think there are any treasures on the floor. Nah, there's, there's no treasures on this floor. All right, wow, that was an incredibly anticlimactic sublevel for the whole of beasts. <laughs> I don't remember the dungeons exactly, but I remember a lot of them. The Hole of Beasts, sub-level 3. Alright, here are the fire hazards. I've been waiting for you, Star Fox. Louis. Alright, Red Pikmin. This way. Now, the red Pikmin are immune to fire, but Olimar and Louie are not, so keep them aside. Also, one cool thing about Pikmin 2 is that the, the dungeons after the Emergence Cave are, like, pseudo-randomly generated. Like, the given each given sub-level will be like, okay, sub-level 3 is going to have these treasures and these enemies and, like, these hazards. But the actual, like, way that they're arranged is slightly random, which is actually very cool. So each, each playthrough is slightly different. So we can destroy the stuff in there, and if you look closely, there is a treasure in here. It's just not out in the sunlight. Gotta bring that back. And some sub-levels, like, that are randomly generated are a lot harder than others. So sometimes if you're like, oh my gosh, this is almost impossible, you could try resetting and then loading the sub-level again. You might get something a lot easier. Again, it'll still have the same stuff, but it just might be arranged in a different order. So if you have, like, a bunch of nasty stuff all next to each other, if you reset, you might have it more spread out so it's easier to handle. The Strife Monolith. Is this a matchbox? I don't know. It looks like a, a fire flower on here. I'm not really sure what that is, but it's worth 150 Pocos, so... There we go. Maybe that's, like, a pocket game of some kind? Oh, boy! It's a Famicom disc. <laughs> oh, boy. Str oh, it's Majon. Okay. A lot of the stuff in here is, like, definitely Japaneseified because this was made by a Japanese company. Makes sense. All right, which, what game is this? That's a Super Famicom, or I think it's either a Famicom disc or a Super Famicom disc. It's 
It's worth 230 Pocos, though. The Cosmic Archive. Um, can't tell what that is. I think that's in Kanji anyway, so I won't be able to tell. If anybody knows what game that is, though. Alright, cool. That was the last treasure. Going deeper. Gotta dig a little deeper. Boop, 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 boop. Hole of Beasts, sub level 4. Alright. Oh! And so soon. Well, you're right next to me, and I've got purple Pikmin, so... Banzai! And sometimes enemies can hold treasures. Wow! His dead body lurched real far away. <laughs> that was easy. See, if depending on how it's randomly generated, he could be at the end of a corridor, so... That was interesting. Oh, it's a Game & Watch! Man, we're getting a lot of old school games here. The Dream Architect. <laughs> Very nice. We almost have 2,000 Pocos. That's nuts. Okay, you're the guy's corpse. Okay, yep, those are the those are the spider enemies I was talking about. So your Pikmin will freak out, but they can drop nectar and they can even drop sprays for you. So there must have been an egg back there, which they emerged from. That was... that was startling. Uh-oh. We lost one. Well, we didn't lose one, but, like, there's a Pikmin who is AWOL. Where the heck is he? I have 80 out of 81. Where's that remaining one? Harold? Where did you go? You know you're not supposed to separate from the group. Harold? <laughs> Freaking Harold, we can't bring him anywhere. Oh, hey! More purple Pikmins. Unfortunately, these new... Oh, wait, but we got Nectar. In fact, I think we have enough de Nectar where each pur new purple Pikmin can drink their own. Where did Harold the helicopter go? It's the Ace of Spades. How ominous. The Luck Wafer. <laughs> Whoa, what's the back of the card like? Ooh, that's a nice design. The Luck Wafer? The Ace of Spades is supposed to be like the Harbinger of Death. <laughs> All right, that was the last treasure, I do declare. Where the heck is that Pikmin? We're supposed to be able to see the Pikmin by their glow. Where did he go? Oh yeah, there's... Where the heck did he go? I mean, he's going to follow us when we dive into the next sub-level. Oh, how the heck did you get all the way over there? How? I never even came close to over here. I am confused. I did not want to bring all of you over here, no. Yeah, he must have gotten really spooked by the spiders. That's nuts. Well, I'm glad that it was a red Pikmin who ran all the way over there, not a purple one who ran into a fire geyser and got burned alive. That would have been bad. Really, really bad. Alright. 
Okay, more nectar. If you want to give me a spray, I wouldn't say no to that. Rats. Well, everyone's still alive, so that's good. Just keep going. All right. Hole of Beasts, sub-level 5. It's the big one. That is a weird thing on the floor there. Final floor. Oh, lord. Look at that. Looks like the fossilized remains of some creature that got squished. Good lord. That's actually quite unnerving. And here we go, look at the size- Crikey, look at the size of that thing! <laughs> so this is, a uh, This is the first boss of the game. Now the boss is an extremely heavy sleeper, so we can move right around here. Hey, what's up, big chonker? So this is the Empress Bullblax. Emperor Bullblax was the final boss of, uh, I almost said Kingdom Hearts 1, of Pikmin 1. This is the Empress Bullblax, and she's kind of all bark and no bite. She's huge. Not that big of a deal, though, so, um... Pikmin, you ain't allowed to trip. So, fortunately, we have 30 purple Pikmin here, so, uh... We're gonna just toss them like crazy. Okay. Oh, no, 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 okay, no, no that's bad, that's bad. Now move away! What?! One Pikmin deliberately ignored my whistle just so he would get run over. Alright, well, there's our first death. <laughs> I literally whistled for him. He's like, no, I'm not going. I'm going to attack this guy and get crushed. <laughs> Alright, well, I figured we were going to have our first death this stream. This is why we have saves at the end of each sublevel. Begin. There are a couple of ways to beat this boss. Maybe attacking it head-on is not the best way of doing it. You can attack it head-on, or you can attack it with the sides, and then there are some alcoves, so the boss will kind of roll around. There are these little uh, inlets around here, like here, and then you can use the C-stick, and the boss won't be able to roll on in. So I think, yeah, maybe we'll try it that way. All right, there we go. I'm gonna zoom out, so that way I can keep my eyes on the boss. Boss will kind of roll around. Boss has a huge amount of HP, but then the boss will kind of rest, so then we can toss more Pikmin on it. And again, just be patient. Be patient, use the C-stick to march into the cave when you need to. And then just wait. So yeah, this is a very easy first boss. I was just stupid and died to it early. Ugh. And my Pikmin blatantly ignored me. But yeah, don't attack it head on. Just attack it from the side. And then move into the cave. There we go. And it's dead. Oof. Psh. Oh. Oh, Lord. That's a gross corpse. And we get a love tester. How bizarre. This device is emitting black light. It must have been ingested by that creature. What an absolutely repulsive life form. Our return to Hakatate cannot come soon enough. Kind of weird how the Empress Bulwax doesn't even eat you. It just tries to crush you. Oh, Gross. Man, that Fane's dead body is even grosser than I remember. Boss boss beasts still aren't worth a whole lot, but they are worth quite a few more Pokos than regular Fane's, so... Yeah, we can sell for 15, which, I mean, still not as much as, like, 100, which these treasures are fetching for, but that's around the price some of the later game treasures are worth, so it's worth bringing them back. Unless you're a purist and don't want to bring any beasts back and want to get your money purely from the treasure. You can do that as well. 200 coins. Prototype detector. It's the love tester. Those fanes don't actually work, by the way, so don't even bother. 
This contraption seems to react when it approaches a treasure. I will connect it to my radar. Processing complete. The treasure gauge is now fully operational. It will now appear on your monitor. The needle will move right as you approach treasure. So there we go. So now we get a more advanced sound effect when there's no treasure, and it'll turn gray and stop moving if there's no treasure on the floor. So that's very nice. It's great to have that. And there we go. That's the whole of Beasts. We had to reset once, but that's perfectly fine. Let's escape back to the surface. All right, Prototype Detector, Cosmic Archive, Luck Wafers, Strife Monolith, Stone of Glory's Dream Architect, and 46 Pocos from Selling Beasts. Cave complete! No Pikmin's died. I definitely didn't have to reset for that.